Fixer Rock TV. Today I have in the house with me is John Janash. Okay, John, give us a little bit of history on how you started in the business and how long you've been in the business. Well, I've been in the business really about, about 10, 12 years at least. And I started as a DJ, you know, for when internet radio came out and things like that. Before that, I was of course, but part of Outlaw Day Street Team back in the day with 101 and all that. But I gained prominence through the internet radio ranks, and then I seen a lot of talent here in Houston and decided to jump in. Okay, so I know you, since you've been doing this for a while, and I know music has been a huge part of your life ever since you were young. So compared to the 80s, because you've been in this business for quite some time, what is one of the biggest positive and negative changes that you see or a shift that you see working with bands today? The negative is there's no surprise element in music anymore. You can go on the internet, you can go anywhere and see what's upcoming. Me personally as a kid, I used to look forward to the Texas Jam announcements and different concert series that would come into Houston. And if people have gotten real accustomed just to look online instead of researching new music. They just look online, see what they understand and see what they know mm -hmm. instead of going exploring and seeing what's new. Yeah. Um, and the, the record industry is the same way. Everybody can bootleg music and things like that. So bands are forced to tour more. The newer talents that come up, I mean, Houston's full of great freaking talent with the saturates. Yeah. The, the, the inner images, the, uh, well, heck, look at Hold On Hollywood, for instance, going and playing with Bon Jovi. These, these opportunities are not there as much because of the internet. internet. Yeah. The positives, the talent's better. Um, in, in this day and age, you got better equipment, better things to uh, develop your sound yeah. than you did back in the 80s. That would be the positive. What goes into being like a promoter? Because most people who aren't so familiar with being a promoter, they think it's so easy, like that all you're doing is promoting bands and it doesn't take a brain scientist, but little do they know there's a lot that goes into being, you know, a music promoter and, and, and having to deal with what you deal with. If you are, you want to work, promoting's the game. If you don't want to work and you count on the internet to be your living to promoting is not going to be for you because putting a flyer on Facebook and saying, okay, come to my show is not all there is to it. Yeah. I go from where it goes, signing the contracts with the, whoever my national is. For, for instance, I got Saving Able coming here. I sign the contracts for Saving Able. I put the, the bands on the card. I get the tickets printed, the flyers printed, everything that goes with it. I keep up to date with each and every band say, hey, where can I pitch you? What do y'all need? You know, I want to make sure everybody's sales are a par. If I can't, if their sales ain't part, you know, where I need them, I got I, I to gotta be out there and hustling as well. Yeah. But I need to figure out where are my weaknesses, let alone it be the social networks, need more flyering, need more Facebook ads purchased, whatever needs to be done to fill in those gaps where we're struggling, I got to figure it out. Yeah. I'm one of those that I'm a student of what I do. Okay, cool. But we all know that social media is the new way of promoting. You know, like you were saying, we have social media and it's such a big deal to promoting, you know, for shows and um, getting the word out. How have these platforms changed the way you work? They haven't. No. They haven't. I, I don't count on the internet. As a matter of fact, I think it's just poor, uh, in my opinion, and that the internet is so strong these days because I like fan interaction. I know the first person that ever bought a ticket from me for a show, and I know the last person that bought a ticket from me for a show. It's just a part of my repertoire and who I am. I'm a very friendly individual as far as fans and things like that because they all count. Yeah. Everybody buys a ticket counts, and doing it all over the internet, it just, to me, I don't like it. I think it kills the industry. I think it hurts us. I'm glad it, it helps some of the locals because it can get your music further yeah. out. But the fan interaction just isn't the same as it once was. Okay. Okay. So 
So what are five tips to any indie artist or bands that are out on the road touring, touring or just, you know, doing shows that will make both your life easy and theirs when it comes to um, booking shows, et cetera? You know, a perfect example of that would be Dead Horse Drama. Um, they're out touring. Matter of fact, they're overseas right now, which I'm freaking extremely proud of those guys. I brought them in years ago with Straight Line Stitch, just on a whim because they were by on band back then. And I brought them in, and they're the perfect example. They get out, they fly her, they get out and meet their people. And no matter what city, it doesn't make a difference that they're in another country right now, and they're doing that. They're out enjoying the people. And that is what makes it successful. And they got the drive and the initiative. You gotta have drive. You gotta have one. If you think your music's good enough and you can sit at home and do it on the computer, by God, there's a several of them. I'll put Theory of Dead Man right under the bus. They should stay home and record music because that's what they do great. Their, their CDs are great. I know I'm not a fan of their freaking uh, show, you know, their stage presence. But then that's one I can think of off the top of my head. If they stay at home, record great CDs, they'll make millions. And then, you know, then if they go out on tour, they're just, it's not there. But Dead Horse Drama, by far. They put the work in. They, they do great, solid music. Every time I, I hear one of their new tunes, it's solid, well thought out, well planned, well executed. They got a great team behind them for recording their music because that's important. Home recordings just doesn't work. And then they get out, they meet each and every one of their fans, and they know their fans when they walk in the door. Yeah. And that's important. I see a lot of bands, oh, non Point's another good one. They have the same work ethic. I'll tell you what, Rob from non Point, one of the hardest working freaking people I've ever met, and that's why I'm representing them tonight. Mike here. Yep. You know, representing him. Representing. Yeah. And notice we've got the two hardest working bands I can think of. And her image is great with their people, too. Yeah. You know, there's several bands yeah. that are like that, but that's what it takes. Basically, what we've learned today is, you know, work ethic is everything when it comes to, like, promoting your band and not just doing it online, but also going out and interacting with the fans and, and the flyers, just everything. You know, don't just stick online, right? You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, perfect example on the rap scene, and I'll give it props to Lost Ninja and, and White Noise. That way everybody don't think I'm just rock and metal. The rap scene, Lost Ninja, and White Noise get out and put their work in. Yeah. So. And like, I, so I wasn't born, you know, like in the 80s or anything like that, but I'm sure it was totally different than it is now because they didn't have the, the, the social media platforms like we have now. Yeah, you know what I it, mean? Was, it was totally different. We would have to literally street team everything. That's why 101, KOL, and 97 Rock, they became powers. And I remember going to a, uh, a fight that 97 Rock put on, uh, Hitman Hearns, back in the day. And they would, we went out and fired everywhere because it was closed circuit TV. So you'd have to fire to let people know where they can watch it. And it, this is in how music was. You went and you met everybody. You took the time, the initiative to do so. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's always great to have advice from people like you who have, you know, <laughs> lived the days where there was no, not social media, and then living in the now, in the present, where, you know, it's, I sort of think, maybe start to make people be, you know, a little lazy. You know what I mean? I think, it, I don't think it's lazy. I think it's not educated uh, because if you look at the bands today, they're a lot, of course, younger than I am. I mean, for crying out loud, they're, you know, or, or Spencer or Frankie that are here. They're not, you know, educated into how we did it back then yeah. compared to what is done today. Does it always work firing up in the neighborhoods and everything? No. Me personally, I think every band should put two songs on a freaking blank CD put their band name on it, and go with me to meet people. That way they can get a, an idea of their sound. Say, hey, I got a show coming up such and such date. Here's a, check out our music. If you enjoy it, come on back. Yeah, like physically, like networking. Yes. Yeah. Is it cheap to do? Is it time consuming? Sure it is. Sure. I freaking used to help uh, saturate Five Eyes Wide and 
bunch of them sit down and print CDs all day long. It's just because that's what we love to do. You know, I love helping people out. I'll still do it today. If somebody wanted to do it, I, I got two computers that print all day long. I'd help them out if they bought the CDs. It don't make a difference to me. I'm at home. So I hope you guys could really take from this interview with John here today. I would definitely take from the advice. You're such a great educated man, so super prominent here. Everybody just loves John, and I knew I could count on you to interview to give us some you know, nice advice and really good information for the bands that are watching to take from and for the audience who might be interested in doing what you do for a living, literally. So. I enjoyed it. I wouldn't give it up. I wouldn't change it for the world. Aw. Well, thank you so much, John, for taking your time out with me tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you want to get, you know, contact John and you want to just personally talk to him, I'm sure you could. Uh, Definitely. You can hit me on Facebook. I'm on. You can hit me on Facebook. You can hit me on Twitter. You can hit me on any social network. Uh, Second Dance Productions. You can hit myself. Find me at any of the clubs. BFP Rock Club, Scout Bar. Concert Club North, I'm there up one of the three at all time, all the time, almost every weekend. So. Cool. So, you guys, just stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you for watching.